Well, thanks, thanks, Martin. So my talk is scheduled for 15 minutes. I just start now, okay? Uh, I, 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 actually, I met Andrew in the last week's conference, so I share my time with Andrew now uh, to, to, to host his talk as well. Anyway, so, so my title is Magnetometry with NV Centers and Isotopically Controls Diamond. And my collaborators are uh, Professor Junko Hayase in our department, along with my students and also uh, 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 Junko's student. Uh, the, uh, the, the talk I'm going to present, the work I'm going to present is mostly achieved by Kohei Ohashi. And also we collaborate with Hewlett Packard Labs in Palo, uh, Palo Alto, California. Uh, samples that I'm going to describe was uh, fabricated by AISD, especially with Dr. Watanabe. And the, uh, for magnetometry, we've been collaborating with Christian Dagan's group at ETH and also his postdoc, Tobias. So I've been working on so-called isotopic, isotop, uh, isotope engineering of uh, semiconductors, especially in the past a few years on silicon. I started off uh, from uh, isotope engineering in germanium when I was a graduate school at UC Berkeley. Then I moved on to isotope engineering in silicon. And more recently, uh, we are working on isotope engineering of carbon, diamond, where you have 98.93% of 12 carbon, which has no nuclear spin, and 1.07% of carbon-13, which has nuclear spin, one half. And uh, before I move on to uh, diamond, let me just uh, describe briefly what we have seen recently with silicon. Uh, and this shows how powerful uh, isotope engineering can be. So in, already in 1998, about 15 years ago, uh, Bruce Kane at New South Wales back then introduced that actually one, can, uh, one could build quantum computer using nuclear spin of phosphorus and electron spin of phosphorus. And while this has been quite challenging to fabricate, uh, more recently it has been achieved at University of New South Wales where the original idea was formed. And this is actually the picture of such device with phosphorus, single phosphorus implanted into such small region. And if you build such device with natural silicon, uh, where you have lots of for, uh, uh, silicon 29 and silicon 30, then you get T2 star of about 55 nanoseconds, short T2 star with oscillation that doesn't have good visibility between zero and one. However, more recently, we actually uh, provided our best 28 isotopically enriched wafer to the group at New, New South Wales, and then they achieved that for single uh, phosphorus, electron spin bound to phosphorus in silicon, they could actually see Rabi oscillation for more than 10 microseconds with such beautiful visibility between zero and one. So I was quite amazed that actually isotope engineering matters even for single phosphorus placed close to the surface. And even though there are surface centers and other things, um, isotope enrichment matters for uh, such application. And basically, uh, motivated by such success and also with other success, uh, we've been working on isotope engineering of diamond and its application to magnetometry. So in a long-term goal, what we want to do is the following. We want to place NV center close to the chip tip of such cantilever and detect whether, whatever the nuclear spins or spins we have underneath. But the short-term goal, what we want to do is that we want to uh, bury or place NV center as close as possible to the surface of the diamond and then use such uh, NV center electron spin, which is a, you know, basically a quantum magnet, to detect magnetic field coming from, for example, nuclear spins placed on such you know, planar device. So we want to place whatever we want to measure on top of diamond and measure nuclear spin properties using NV centers um, buried underneath. 
So if we want to, for example, uh, measure acetone, uh, then uh, basically we want to place such molecule on top of such substrate with NV centers, diamond tip, and then we want to measure magnetic field direction of magnetization of each nuclear spin. And as Andy has already explained, for this, NV center is actually very suited because one can achieve single spin detection optically and remotely without distracting such um, uh, property. So uh, our short term goal is to basically achieve single NMR detection of proton placed on such diamond device. And this is truly quantum sensor because let's say we start from proton and then we perform NMR to flip the direction of proton nuclear spin and then by flipping such nuclear spin, one changes the uh, magnetic flux direction and we want to change the change, we want to detect the change in the nuclear spin detection, uh, nu nuclear spin orientation by using electron spin bound to NV center. This is different from classic magnets where flipping of the one magnet actually flips the other magnet. Instead, what we want to do is the following. We want to shine RF pulse to this electron spin, so we actually uh, move this electron spin sideways. And this side wave spins actually rotate around magnetic field, it's precession, and this precession speed rate changes with the function of which direction this nuclear spin is flipping. So the magnetic field, this precession speed changes when the nuclear spin up, between nuclear spin up or nuclear spin down. So this is truly magnetic, uh, quantum sensor in this sense. Okay. This technique has been apply, uh, employed already recently to detect small number of protons placed on top of diamond by two different groups. One is from Stuttgart in Germany and the other from uh, IBM Almaden in California. So Stuttgart group placed emulsion oil on top of such diamond and detected about 10,000 proton nuclear spins successfully. So it's, it's, it's the smallest number of NMR uh, performed and detected uh, simultaneously. Uh, IBM Almaden group actually placed basically photoresist used for um, uh, for s in semiconductor technology and they detected number, actually larger number of nuclear spin here, but they succeeded in detecting an MR of protons using single NV center buried underneath. So uh, our approach is basically the same, but we are focusing on developing better sample. So uh, sample has been produced uh, actually grown at AIST in Scuba using CVD technique with the uh, parameters shown here. And then um, basically the name of the game is to place NV center as close as possible to the surface so that whatever we put onto the surface can be detected because the dipolar coupling between nuclear spin on top and NV electron spin falls down with R cube, uh, inverse of the R cube, distance cube. So we fabricated five nanometer thick or five nanometer thin uh, 12 carbon diamond film, isotopically enriched diamond film. And then um, we, uh, what we attempted here is to form NV centers successfully in such thin film. It is believe that it's difficult to achieve NV center, active NV, NV center in such thin film because of the uh, surface pinning as shown here in the band bending uh, diagram uh, uh, illustrating uh, what happened to the, to the, by the pinning at the surface. So here I show the distance from the surface, the di uh, as a fun distance from the surface, the band bending of the conduction band and valence band and so on. And it is known that due to the surface states, uh, diamond band diagram always bends upwards, just like forming the Schottky bar barrier. Then, uh, if I have bar Fermi level here, so-called NV minus level comes above the Fermi level so that 
NV center close to the surface here can no longer bind electron. Without electron, we cannot detect any uh, electron spin resonance. So what we attempted to do is to dope such thin layer heavily with the nitrogen to make this as heavily n-type as possible. So bring the band down and hopefully some of the NV minus level will come below the Fermi level, even though they are placed close to the surface. So with this, we succeeded in forming NV minus center within five nanometer sample. So you can see in the two dimensional mapping, bright spots coming up from such thin film and they are really coming from NV minus center in such thin film, okay? And here, T2 of one of the NV centers in such thin film is about 45 microsecond. Typically, in bulk, best bulk sample, for example, even in the, the sample we grew, T2 is about 1.7 millisecond. It, this is all in room temperature. However, in such thin film, the T2 went down to 45 microsecond, most likely due to the presence of the surface defects intrinsic surface defects that are unavoidable, but, but at the same time, it could be due to heavy, heavy uh, nitrogens uh, coming from heavy doping. Uh, nevertheless, less, we show that I will show you that 45 microsecond is actually sufficiently long for single spin detection. Just to show that we weren't just lucky by it to have just one and the center where that has 45 microsecond, we've actually measured T2 of other centers, the NV centers, one is 23 microseconds and so on. But as you can see, most of them are always in the order of, you know, tens of second, microseconds. So we have been quite happy with this results. Um, the question arises whether such NV centers are really in thin five nanometer layer. And here we actually made use of the fact that we are growing isotopically pure 12 carbon layer. So if you have 13 carbon around, always spin echo decay comes with inseam uh, uh, oscillation coming from the presence of the 13 carbon around the NV center. Here, all the NV decay, spin echo, uh, did not accompany such oscillations so that we know that NV centers are indeed placed in such thin film. Okay, and just to show you that T2 star in such NV centers are also quite long, 800 nanoseconds and so on. So now we move on to surface chemistry. In surface chemistry, uh, we want to change the surface from the presence case of hydrogen terminated to oxygen terminated termination. So if we do this, uh, we actually have slight increase in NV minus concentration uh, due to uh, basically suppression of the band bending. And uh, we can also measure for such cases how T1 changes. In, in fact, uh, between H termination, uh, hydrogen termination, and oxygen termination, T1 doesn't change so much three milliseconds or so. And we also uh, measure T1 rho, which is too complicated to explain at this point in limited time, so I skip. And then uh, this is just the you know, estimated estimation of how small the magnetic field we can detect uh, we're using such NV center placed in five nanometer thin film. So with distance of five nanometer from the surface, the hydrogen placed on such film uh, should uh, expo impose magnetic field of about 11 nanotesla at the position of, uh, of NV center. So our goal is to be able to detect 11 nanotesla coming from such proton on the surface. With T2 of 45 microsecond, we should be able to detect magnetic field as small as three nanotesla. So with this resolution, we should be able to detect such 11 nanotesla field coming from hydrogen placed on the surface. So our first trial uh, actually performed at ETH, ETH, in collaboration with Christian Dagen's group, is that 
we try to reproduce the experiments, or actually repeat the experiments published this year in Science by Stuttgart Group. We put emulsion oil on top of our sample, and then indeed we have been able to detect proton nuclear spins in the emulsion oil, and the number of nuclear spins we estimated is about 10,000. So our sample, again, has the capability of detecting 10,000 uh, we proved that we, our sample is capable of detecting NMR of proton, 10,000 protons placed on the surface of such center. And then we are actually now trying to reduce the number of, of proton placed on such surface so that we can go down to 1,000, 100, 10, and eventually one proton, hopefully, in a few years. So with this, let me conclude my talk. Um, NV minus centers are introduced successfully in five nanometer thin diamond film by band engineering. And absence of insane confirms that the NVs are in the top five nanometer layer. T2, T1, T1 row are limited not only by, not by 13 carbon, but by background nitrogen and surface defects, most likely. But T1 and T1 row are long enough for single proton NMR and I think we are well on our way to achieve such goal. So thank you so much for your attention.